Welcome to Decorate Like a Design Boss, a podcast for design lovers who want to create beautiful spaces in their very own homes. My name is Kimberly Grigg, and I'm a professional interior designer who teaches design lovers like yourselves how to decorate. And when I say decorate, I mean decorate like a design boss. If you're ready to create a space that your family loves and your neighbors can't stop raving about, well, buckle up, honey, because it's time to design. Well, hello there, design lovers. It is always nice to be here, and I am loving today's topic for a couple of reasons. First of all, because I am going through my own master bath renovation right now, and because I want to help you take the guesswork out of how to plan a bathroom reno without experiencing overwhelm. So needless to say, today's topic is bathroom renovations. Here we go. So I want to talk about five steps to a successful bathroom renovation. Before we dive deep though, let me share with you just a couple of things that you might want to be aware of. First of all, did you know that I send out a newsletter each week? It is chock full of design tips and inspirations, and you can access this by simply going to my website, which is KimberlyGriggDesigns.com, and sign up to join our mailing list. I promise not to overdo it or harass you, but instead to provide you with knowledge and information about my favorite subject, interior design. Also, do you know that you can enjoy a live show each and every week on Facebook and Instagram? It's called It's Time to Design, and this happens every Thursday at 4, and of course, there's always the replay. We cover a lot of ground on this show and often reveal jobs that we're installing, which are called Live on Location. And of course, you can also take a deep dive into the world of design by signing up for one of my courses. It's like a PhD in interior decorating for the design enthusiast. All right, enough plugs. Now, let's get on with today's show. This year, I've been involved with a lot of bathroom renovations, and I must say, This is going to be the topic for a whole new class. Bathroom renos can be challenging, but they also can be one of the top places that you can update and up value and up level your home that gets good results in resale value. Not to mention the pure enjoyment of a beautiful bath. There are things about bathroom renos that you need to know, and I'm not going to be able to give you a full PhD in this short program, but I am going to share with you five things that will make a bathroom reno go a little bit smoother. So, step one in the process is to, first of all, assess what can stay and what needs to go. This is the deciding part of the project, and some of these decisions are going to be based on function, some aesthetics, and of course, some will be budget-oriented. I typically start with, if you're dreaming, make a unicorn list, a list of all the things that you desire in this bathroom. Don't hold back. Really dream. Let yourself go. Be brave. Take risk. We can always climb back down the mountain, but it's harder to climb up the mountain if you don't know what you truly desire. This is the time when you scour Pinterest, you scour magazines, you scour anything, any information that you can get your hands on about products that are available for a bathroom. For example, in my own master bath reno that is going on right now, another reason to tune into my live show because we are doing updates often, my unicorn list looks like this. Comfortable tub, 
Listen, I'm a bath girl. I take a bath every single day and I want my tub to be comfortable. So many times I've gone to five star luxury hotels only to climb in their bathtub and I practically drown because the bathtub's so big, my feet don't touch to anchor me inside of the space. I would never buy a bathtub that I could not sit in. It's just important to me because I spend a ton of time in my tub. Another thing that I'd like to have are heated towel bars. I am a freezing girl. I am cold all the time and I love, love heated towel bars. I have considered heated floors, but I don't think I'm going to that extent. I think I'm okay with rugs on my floor and slippers. I wear slippers all the time, so chances are I wouldn't be feeling the heated floors anyway. Another thing that we're doing, this was my husband's big wish, big request. In fact, it was the first thing that we purchased because he wanted to make sure that I allowed for it. We're installing an infrared sauna. Yep, he's really all about this. He's done a lot of research and he's giving up room in his very own closet to be able to house this contraption. I don't personally know a whole lot about them. I guess I'll be learning because in the end, I'll be the one responsible for the installation of this. But I hear that the health benefits related to an infrared sauna are incredible. So another thing that I wanted in this master reno was clean looking tile that feels timeless. My home has a bit of a historical feel to it, and I want to respect that. I'm not trying to turn it into a modern contemporary, but I do love a little juxtaposition. I like to blend the historical with a little bit of the modern and For me, it comes out looking dreamy. The bathroom is a relaxing place for me, and I need calm and quiet. So I'm using some very beautiful natural stones mixed with some white glass, which is sparkly, and then a tile that is the same white sparkly glass, but instead of white, it's a bluish gray, and it just punctuates the white glass. It all looks like a gorgeous waterfall to me. So I think it's pretty. I think it's restful. I'm not a gray person, and this This particular tile leans more bluish than gray, but there is a little bit of a gray undertone, but it's that kind of gray that doesn't look dreary to me, but instead it has a little spark of, um, there used to be a color called Cinderella's Glass Slipper, and that's what it looks like to me. So to me, that's beautiful. I also want a timeless wallpaper in Damask. Damask are making a huge comeback, and I've always loved them. And in fact, in my current master bath, there's a gorgeous shade of green damask, and I have never tired of it. In fact, if it were in good shape, I'd be leaving it. But instead, I'm going to go with some sort of damask that is a little bit more neutral, and I'm going to be able to get my color, which is going to be soft lilacs and lavenders, in very small touches throughout the room in accessories. I also am redoing our closets. So our closet interiors are important to me and they will be getting new cabinets. This bathroom, just so you know, is 35 years old. So if it sounds like I'm being exorbitant, well, in a way I am, but I want this bathroom to last another 30, 40 years. I am painting the existing cabinets, which were custom built in the bathroom park. The closet interiors are getting new cabinets. They had the melamine stuff and It just looks dated, and it is dated, and some of it's falling down, so it's time. So that's getting a whole new, more custom-fitted closet interior for both of our master closets. And then better lighting is important to me. And then I want a TV near the tub so that I can watch a show while soaking in the bathtub. So now I'm going to rank the list in order of importance, and based on your budget... And based on my budget, I'm going to have to make probably some different selections, but this is my unicorn wish list, and I may have to eliminate some of the items on the list. 
For example, in my own bath, I'm looking at this as if it's a 20 to 30 year decision. So if I'm splurging on the materials, even if it means that I might not get the inset cabinetry that I want inside my closet, I might have to go for standard doors. There's trade-offs in any budget. I can also live without the heated towel bars, but I rank these items by order of importance. So now you have a framework to begin to select your materials. Now you're going to determine a budget number that you can live with. And of course, this is not easy because most people don't know what things in the design world cost. So this, my friends, is a reality. Let's just say that number one on your wish list is heated floors and towel bars, but your budget is limited. Well, this is when I would consider selecting tiles and materials that are super budget friendly so that you get the things that are super important to you. That is where you want to spend your splurge money. And when you use a budget item for your splurge item, well, you're going to have a range of that cost item versus one set number. Conversely, if beautiful tile and aesthetics are the most important thing to you and budget is a concern, then you might prioritize the tile and other elements, such as those towel bars, heated towel bars, well, they become less important. And then you have to be the one to make some tough decisions. As a side note, sometimes you can use inexpensive tiles, but vary the patterns and shapes so that you can make the space unique and avoid the cost of some of the more expensive tile options. All right, we're on to number three. And now I want to talk about the pretty. I'll just say this is the time that enlisting the services of a designer could be important. We just understand the materials that are out there and we understand them so well. And as professionals, we also know what is possible. We also know how to mix up those shapes and patterns of your tiles so that you get a look that is specific and unique to you. But if hiring a designer is not a part of your plan, I'm going to tell you how I approach the pretty part of the project in just a few steps. First, I give the client something that they cannot think of themselves, even if I'm using materials that are very common. Hence, talking about varying those shapes and directions and grout joints of common materials. If you're resurfacing a countertop, then you can consider shopping for remnants. This can be a very big budget saver. Don't give up if you go once and they don't have anything because these materials are cut on a daily basis. And this is a good way to obtain stone tops on a budget. Number three, consider what you're going to do to the walls from the onset. This will even help you know what selections are needing to be made. You know, I'm a huge fan of wallpaper, and I just mentioned that I'm using a beautiful neutral damask, damask. So I might start with one that I find to be gorgeous, and it becomes my jumping off point for the overall design, and it helps me determine the entire remainder of the space. Now, number four, let's talk about plumbing fixtures. First, determine if there are any elements that you need to work with. You'll want to marry this finish of those existing elements into the rest of the selections. For example, I'm keeping my gorgeous, gorgeous faucets on my sinks. Now I'm just going to marry that finish with the rest of the selections. It happens to be a gold. It's kind of like a brushed gold. And I, I didn't even know they did this 35 years ago, but they did. And I think they are beautiful. So I'm just going to marry that finish into the rest of my selections. Try hard not to pigeonhole yourself here and select something that's timeless as your taste and style dictates. Let's just say you are using something and maybe you don't want like a brush nickel and you don't want to use it everywhere. 
Well, I say it's time to enlist perhaps matte black. Matte black is a little more universal. It goes with golds. It goes with stainless. It goes with chrome. It goes with a lot of different things. But if you introduce the matte black, you're going to need to introduce touches of black throughout the rest of the space. Fixture styles and color choice is often based on the mood style and function of that space. If you're going for glam, then you might want to select polished chrome. If you're going for a Joanna Gaines or a farmhouse look, bronze or black is a good choice. Or if you're doing light and airy, try brushed nickel. And if you're going eclectic or updated, then consider some of the newer golds. Next, let's talk vanities. Does the renovation require a new vanity? If so, again, the mood, the style, and the function of the space really matters. If you're going to keep the existing vanity, is it going to be updated in some way? Perhaps you're painting it. Good ways to do this is painting it or changing out the hardware. And of course, adding a new countertop can be a definite refresher. So, renovating a bathroom certainly has its proper place in the design world, but it is a little complicated. I hope that some of these tips will help with the overall process. There's a lot to know about bathroom renovation, but if you embark on one, it can really add value to your life and to your home. So now, I love to do this. I love to have a little pick my brain session at the end. And I get so many questions about bathroom renos. In fact, I've done a couple of bathroom shows on my live. It's time to design on Thursday. And these are some questions that came from one or actually two of those shows. The first is polished versus matte finish on tile. And here's the deal. Bathrooms can be slippery because there's water that stands or water that gets dripped. As far as the look goes, I love a polished look in a bathroom, but I don't typically use polished in a space where I feel like it could be dangerous somewhat to someone. I will tend to go with more of a matte finish. In my own bathroom, which is rather large, I'm using polished marble, but I also use rugs in my bathroom. So I know that we'll be safe and I know that the sizes of the rugs will work and that I can do this with assurance that no one's going to slip. Now, inside the shower itself, you must use something that is gripping. And I usually use a smaller tile um, that where there is a grout line or a way for someone to, for the surface to absorb the water, the moisture, and to kind of serve as a good foundation for your feet so that you don't slip. I've often been asked this, should I lay my tile on a diagonal or straight? So there's a lot of schools of thought about this. I love to do floors on a diagonal when it makes sense, but too many diagonals become too many wows per room. So if you're using diagonal tile up the shower or a busy, busy pattern up the shower wall, then I probably will lay the, the pattern straight on the floor. But a diagonal will make the space appear larger. Another question, how big should my tile be? Well, I'm a girl who says mm, I typically go for as big as I can get it. I use 12 by 24s. Uh, typically when I use a 12 by 24, I lay them side by side and not in a random brick pattern. Of course, this depends on the mood and the style of the space. But if I'm going for a more of a contemporary vibe or more updated vibe, even transitional vibe, I'll lay them end to end and I will do side by side and it just gives you a cleaner, cleaner look. If I can, I like to get 24 by 24 pieces and I like to lay them on the diagonal and this would be for a floor. In a shower itself, I do any numbers of those things and I vary the pattern as I've mentioned prior. Um, just again, depending on what the style of the space is all about. And 
here's a question that I get a lot. What about grout? What color do I use? What are the different joints? What the terminologies mean? And here's what I'll say. Sometimes I use grout with purpose. Recently in a bathroom for my own personal condo renovation, I used a larger grout joint because I wanted it to be a part of the look. It is very rare that I do that, but this was a retro looking tile and it just looked like it was the retro thing to do. Trending more now is to have the smallest joint line that you can have so that you don't even notice the grout. I match the grout exactly to the tile that I'm laying unless I'm doing more of a farmhouse look. And in that case, I might go with a dark grout. It's very, very pretty against a white subway tile. As far as the different joint terminologies, there are a multitude. And the best place to refresh your memory on this would be Google. There are soldier joints, which is lined up. There's all sorts of widths. And again, I still refer to Google for different grout joint terminologies. It's a good place to go to know and so that you would always have that handy. So again, I hope that these simple tips will help you think about your bathroom renovation and help you put that one foot in front of the other that we're sometimes afraid to do or that we postpone for whatever reason. These little steps are meant to get you started. So we're already at the conclusion of today's episode, and I hope you do find knowledge here and inspiration that will lead you down a successful path of a bathroom renovation. Meanwhile, if you have questions about this or any other interior design topic, well, email me at designs about your own designs at Kimberly at Kimberly Grig designs.com. And while you're at it, take a moment to rate review and subscribe to this show. It really helps us spread the word. And I truly appreciate it. And you know what I like to say? Don't wait. Today is a great day to decorate. I'll see you next time. And bye for now. Thanks for listening to Decorate Like a Design Boss. If you want more info on how to decorate your space like a pro, visit KimberlyGriggDesigns.com. See you next week.